Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make our puff stitch trees. The pattern comes with three sizes and the yarn that I've chosen for this project is Mary Maxim Titan Bulky Weight Yarn. This yarn was provided by Mary Maxim for this tutorial and there will be a link in the description box on where you can purchase the yarn. I'll be using an eight millimeter crochet hook for this pattern. And this is a Furls Streamline crochet hook. And this is the cookies and cream style hook. You'll also need a yarn needle for bulky yarn for weaving in your tails. An option here is just to get some little LED lights that we can string on the inside if you want to illuminate your trees, which is a fun little touch. And you'll need some foam cones for putting your covers over. So I have three sizes and I picked these up from Michaels, but you can order them as well from Amazon. So this is a 2.75 by six inch cone. So that is the smallest size that I've used. I've taken the wrapper off this one. Okay, so this size, the middle size is 3.7 inches by 8.9 inches. And finally, our largest cone here is a 3.8 by 11.9 inch. And all this information will be in the description box, but those are the sizes that I've used. And for each size, you're going to need one ball. Okay, so let's get started. If you want, you can pull from the center of the ball to make things easier. And we're gonna begin with a magic ring. So let's take the yarn, wrap it around your index finger three times. Take your hook, sliding it through all of the loops, grab your first loop, pull it through, and we'll chain one. And now we'll work six single crochet in the ring. Okay, so now what you'll do is take your tail and start to pull it. You'll notice that only one loop starts pulling in. So the loop that's pulled, take it and give it a tug. It's gonna pull the other loop in tight. Then you can just take your tail and pull. So now you'll have a nice tight circle for the top of your tree. And we'll slip stitch in the first single crochet to join. So going under those two loops, So there's the start of the tree. Now we'll chain one and we're gonna begin our puff stitch pattern. We'll yarn over, go through the first stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, go through the same stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, go back through the same stitch, pull up a loop. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on our hook yarn over and pull through all seven and then we'll chain one we'll skip the next stitch and we'll do a puff in the next stitch so again we'll yarn over go through the stitch pulling up a loop yarn over go back through the same stitch pulling up a loop Always give those a tug. You wanna make sure that this, these loops don't get too tight on your hook. Pull up another loop, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. Chain one, skip the next stitch, and then in the next stitch, we'll work another puff. So one, two, three, yarn over, pull through, chain one. It's gonna be kind of tight at the start, but as we get going, it will get easier. So now we're gonna slip stitch in the top of the puff to join. 
then we'll chain two. So we're going to skip over the first puff and work two puffs in the chain one space. So this round will increase. So we'll work a puff, chain one, and going back in the same chain one space, we'll work another puff. Chain one, in the next chain one space, we'll work another puff. Chain one, go back down through the same space, working another puff. Chain one. And in the last chain one space, we'll again do two puff stitches. So we'll work a puff, chain one and a puff. Pull through, chain one, and we'll slip stitch into the second chain of that chain two that we started with to join. So now we'll work a puff stitch in every chain one space around. So in the first, chain one, in the next, chain one, Chain one, so we should be working around that we have six puff stitches. Chain one. We'll slip stitch to join, we'll chain two, we'll, that will skip us over the first puff into the first chain one space, and we'll work one puff in each chain one space for this round as well. So I'm gonna work that around and then I'll meet you back up. Once you've worked around, so we're ending in the last chain space here, we'll slip stitch in the second chain of the chain two to join, and we'll work another increase at this point. So we'll work one puff in the first chain one space, chain one, and then we'll work two puffs in the next. Chain one and a puff. chain one. So we'll work that pattern around. We'll do one in the next and then two in the next and then repeat that one more time. So I'm going to work that around and then I'll meet you up again. Okay. Once you finish the last puff, chain one. And this time we started with a puff here. So we end with that puff right there and we don't do another one in this space. Okay. So now we'll slip stitch. You should have a total of nine puffs now. And we'll chain two because we want to get over this puff to work into that chain one space so that they're offsetting. So for the next three rounds, we're working one puff in every chain one space around for a total of nine puffs. So let's do that three more, including this round here, three more rounds. So three more rounds at nine puff stitches and then I'll meet you back up for the next increase round. Okay so I have worked one two three rounds and now we're going to do another increase round. I've already slip stitch. I'll chain one and in the very first stitch we'll work a puff
chain one and in the next stitch we'll work a puff chain one and then we'll do two in the next chain one and then going back in the same space we'll work another puff chain one and so now we're going to repeat that in the next two we'll do one and then in the next we'll do two and we'll repeat that around so one Okay, and then in the next, we'll do two. Chain one, and I'm just going to repeat that around, and then I'll meet you back up. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. I'm gonna slip stitch into the first puff to join. This time we'll chain two, because our puff is here, so we're going over to the first chain one space. And we'll be working one puff in every stitch around. Chain one. So in every chain one, sorry, in every chain one space, we're working a puff. So we should have 12 puffs now. I'm gonna work that around. Okay, I've worked all the way around. I'm gonna slip stitch in the second chain, that starting chain two to join, chain one, and we're working now a puff in the first chain one space. Chain one. So the last time we worked three rounds at nine stitches, We've now increased to 12. So I've already done one. We need to do three more and then we're gonna meet back up for another increase. Okay, so here was my last increase round. So one, two, three, four. And now we're gonna do another increase. So this time my puff's here, so we'll chain two, getting over to the first chain one space and we'll work a puff. Chain one, work a puff, chain one, we'll work a puff, chain one, and now in the next stitch we'll do two because we're always increasing three puffs when we do an increase round. So as we grow, we're adding one more puff stitch before we do the increase. So this time we're up to three and then two in the next. Chain one. So now you'll repeat that two more times. So work three and then do two in the next. And we'll increase this time to 15 puffs. Okay, so I finished off with two in the last chain one space. We're gonna slip stitch in the second chain of the chain two to join. Chain one, so now this time the puff's going in that first space. And at this point, now we're just gonna continue working until our tree fits our cone. So for instance, if you're making our middle size one here. We're not gonna increase anymore. You're just gonna continue working until this is gonna fit. As you can see, it's got a nice snug fit to it. So you'll probably have a couple more rows and then we're gonna finish with a round of single crochet. This one's sticky because I've taken the paper off. But I'm working up the bigger one here, so we're gonna have a few more rounds to get it to cover. So you just wanna keep, I'm gonna give you the number that I'm using, but 
If you have a little bit different size cone, basically you just want to keep going to cover your cone. Now, if your cone ends up being a little bit wider, you might wanna do another increased round. So just continue in the increase format that I've shown you in that pattern. So you could do maybe four or five more rounds and then do another increase. However, unless your cone goes a little bit fatter quicker, then you might wanna increase a little bit quicker. But for this pattern and the cones that I'm using, this is as big as we need to go. So I'm gonna continue now working around until I cover this larger cone, which is, let's see, it's 11.9 inches. So I'm gonna keep going till I can cover my cone and then I'll meet you back up and tell me, tell you how many rounds you need to do. Okay, so here was my last increase round. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six more rounds after it. So we can count here. Let's count starting from our puffs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 puff rounds. So 21 with our starting single crochet round. And now what we're gonna do is slip, we'll slip stitch in that second chain. And we're going to finish off with a round of single crochet. So we'll chain one, a single crochet in that first chain, single crochet in the puff, single crochet in the next chain, single crochet in the puff, Okay, and we're just working that around. Okay, so I'm coming around to my last puff and you should have 30 stitches in total. And now what I'm gonna do is fasten this off and do a seamless join to finish. Okay, so we used almost exactly one ball there. Let me just let you know. So this I used was light gray. And there's 80 yards on a ball, which is about 85 grams. So if you run out, you want to drop a hook size to make sure that you can make one with one ball. You don't want to have to go into another ball. There is a little bit of give here. There's a little bit left over. But if you have run out, just make sure to drop down your hook size. So now what we can do is take our yarn needle, put that on the hook. We're gonna go through the first stitch right under both loops. You're gonna go back through the back loop only. Okay, and just make sure it's not pulled so it looks odd in any way. And as you can see, it's just gonna seamlessly look like a stitch. And then we can just weave this tail out of the way. Okay, so we'll give it a measure. So we're at 13 inches and the widest section is about six and a half. Maybe about seven if you give it a stretch. It will say seven. So here is your cone. Now what you'll do is you're going to cover it. Covers it, it should cover it nice and easily, just like this. It's a perfect fit. You can take off your wrapper if you want. Now if you want to personalize your tree, which is a great idea, you can add a tag just really wherever you want. You could even add it to the top 
of your tree. Okay, and then in the kit, it has some tools that you can use to hammer this. I'm not gonna hammer this on camera, but all you're gonna do is take this, you're going to sit it down and then there's a curved section here. You just put this on and then hammer that and then that will secure it. Okay, so now at the beginning I showed you, I got some just little LED lights from the dollar store. They're just battery operated. If you wanted to put these around your cone to light up, your tree, I'm just gonna use a little push pin just so I can secure that to the top. If you wanted your string then, and if you wanted it in particular spots, you could continue just to pin this in place. You could use some push pins just to hold it. If not, I thought just if I got the top secured, at least I could get mine to go over. Your children, actually, this would be fun for your children's room if you wanted just that they had sort of a little nightlight with a tree. So there is the finished product. Of course, this part is just optional and the tag is optional. This is a really quick and easy project. I do suggest the cones, they will stand up on their own. You could even, um, you don't wanna use stuffing because of the bigger holes, but you could even just stick some lights up inside if you didn't wanna worry about the foam cones. You'll just need some super bulky weight yarn and you can whip up a whole set in an evening. They're so fast and easy to make. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell so you stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.